Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa returned today to the Kingdom of Bahrain after a visit to the Kingdom of Thailand to attend the funeral of the late King Bumibul Adol Yadaj. He was received by Deputy Prime Ministers, Governor of the Southern Governors and senior officials. During his visit, His Royal Highness met with the Thai Prime Minister Preo Chan Ocha and discussed ways to further enhance the bilateral relations and coordination in various fields. He was bid farewell by the representatives of the Thai King, Marshal Shulit Bokbas Yuk, Deputy Prime Minister Admiral Narong Pipa Tanasai, and they expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness's visit and his keenness to strengthen the bilateral relations.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired today the 18th meeting of the Higher Committee for Natural Resources and Economic Security at Rafah Palace. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, delivered a presentation on oil pipeline security and maintenance planning in the kingdom. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince instructed the Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning and BOPCO to continue implementing security and maintenance measures for pipeline facilities across the kingdom. His Royal Highness noted the severity of the recent terrorist attacks on an oil pipeline site in Buri, which was a deliberate act to undermine the security of the kingdom. His Royal Highness commended security authorities and Bobco, whose collective actions succeeded in bringing the fire under control swiftly while preventing any casualties. His Royal Highness extended thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its prompt cooperation in response to the attack, which was instrumental to restoring normal flows of oil supplies between the two countries. In this regard, His Royal Highness also thanked Babco and Aramco for their ongoing collaboration. His Royal Highness praised the efforts of local residents in assisting security authorities, noting that the authorities will continue to work hard to meet their needs in the aftermath of the attack. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today the newly appointed Indonesian Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Noor Sayahrir Raharjo, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness praised the growing bilateral ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Indonesia, noting the Kingdom's aspirations to strengthen coordination and cooperation between the two countries at various levels. His Royal Highness extended his best wishes to the new Ambassador and wished him success in his new diplomatic role, underlining that he will receive all necessary support from the kingdom for his part. The ambassador also expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his support and commitment to advancing bilateral ties at all levels. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the achievement of the Bahrain Handball Federation to win the title of the Asian Federation. He said that the accomplishment is thanks to the role of the Bahrain Olympic Committee and their efforts in improving the administrative and technical work in the national federations, as well as its professional work in the development of legislation and laws governing the work of the federations. He added that the committee followed up on sports federations on a regular basis to ensure the implementation of its plans and strategies to develop the Bahraini sport and assist the federation to professionally implement the strategy. His Highness praised the efforts of the Bahrain Handball Federation in developing its administrative and technical bodies and creating national teams capable of competing in various events. He added that this achievement affirms the high level of the Bahraini sport and capable of caters with the ability to enhance the sports march in the kingdom. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco and Tunisian President B.G. Kaid Isabsi on Morocco and Tunisia's qualification for the 2018 World Cup finals in Russia. His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended the high-level performance of the two teams in the African qualifiers for the World Cup, noting the efforts of both countries' leadership in creating the appropriate atmosphere for the technical and administrative bodies and the players. His Highness affirmed that the participation of four Arab teams in the Russia World Cup, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia reflects the development of Arab sports, wishing the teams success.
The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, honorary chairman of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, the BMMAF, chairman of the High Organizing Committee of the Brave International Combat Week and the fourth World Championships Amateur Mixed Martial Arts, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the fighters of the national team at the Golden Tulip Hotel. Upon his arrival, His Highness was received by International Mixed Martial Arts Federation President Kareth Brown and the Federation's board members. His Highness met with the fighters and the technical and administrative bodies of the national team and was briefed on the preparations for the championship and the actions taken by the team to finish the registration procedures for the championship. His Highness expressed confidence in the ability of the Kingdom's fighters to overcome challenges and make more achievements for the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness affirmed the support of Bahraini sports to the national team and hoped that the team will succeed in achieving outstanding results, adding to the Bahraini achievements in various sports. In more local news, the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired today the weekly meeting where the Council approved a draft law on the GCC selective taxation. The Council stressed that each country should take the necessary measures to issue the law and set the required policies to implement the agreement under the aim of enhancing the economic march of the GCC. The draft law already selected the products that the law will be implemented on. Therefore, no other selective goods may be added except by law, which means that any amendment to the selected goods should be presented to the legislative authority for approval. The draft law also stipulates that each country should achieve economic unity for the member states, indicating that selective goods and tax rates imposed on them is because of their damage to health and the environment. And these goods included tobacco 100%, soft drinks 50%, energy drinks 100%. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, visited today the General Directorate of Civil Defense. He was received by Chief of Public Security, Major General Tariq Al Hassan, and General Director of Civil Defense. At the beginning of the visit, the Interior Minister conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for the sincere effort efforts of civil defense teams in extinguishing the oil pipeline fire near Buri village. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the personnel for their sincerity and professionalism in dealing with this serious terrorist crime. حضوري اليوم للدفاع المدني ما في شك هو عشان اشكرهم المجهود المتميز اللي ظهروا فيه. وإن كان العمل بشكل عام كان عمل مشترك ففي أجهزة وإجراءات اتخذت مشتركة من قبل عدة جهات ولكن حضور الدفاع المدني في وقت قياسي كان سبب رئيسي في سرعة التعامل مع الحدث والإجراءات الثانية اللي تمت في إخلاء المنطقة 
وايضا ايواء عدد من المواطنين اللي كانوا في المنطقه واسعاف عدد من المتضررين كان عمل يشكرون عليه كل اللي كل اللي شاركوا في العمليه والشيء اللي بين عندنا ايضا ان في تعاون مع الاجهزه الثانيه في في نفس المجال فكان في حضور لممثلين ومختصين من شركه بابكو وشاركوا ايضا في هذا العمل ويشكرون على ما قدموه ويمكن هذا الشيء ياكد ان في جاهزيه عاليه في التعامل وانا اكد على اهميه تطوير قدرات الدفاع المدني وجاهزيته باستمرار ولهم الشكر وبالمناسبة أنا أيضا بلغتهم الشكر والتقدير من سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه وسيدي سمو رئيس الوزراء وسيدي سمو العهد الله يحفظهم وإن شاء الله أن احنا نسعى إلى أن يكون في تواجد للدفاع المدني في مختلف المناطق اللي يواكب تطوير النهضة العمرانية في البحرين إن شاء الله بالنسبة لهذه العمليات وهذه الأحداث أنا وضحت أمس بأن هناك اتصال مباشر مع إيران وما يقدم لهذه الأحداث الأرهابية اللي تتم في البحرين سواء كان من فكر عقائدي أو من تدريب أو من تمويل واللي وحتى في التخطيط العمليات من خلال إشراف مباشر ويرتبط التدريب بالحرس الثوري وعناصر من الحرس الثوري في إيران مباشرة وهذه ليست المرة الأولى اللي إحنا نصرح فيها عن ارتباط عن ارتباط العمليات والأحداث الإرهابية في البحرين بإيران. ولكن لازم ان هذا الامر يكون واضح للمجتمع الدولي وكل من يهتم باستقرار منطقه الخليج وهذا الامر اللي نسعى ان شاء الله الى توضيحه بالادله القاطعه الى كل من يهمهم امر استقرار هذه المنطقه الهامه من العالم هناك عمل مشترك وتنسيق بين مختلف الاجهزه الامنيه واننا نعمل من خلال رؤية أمنية موحدة في التعامل مع خلنا نسميها الجيوب الأرهابية فالوضع بشكل عام مستقر إنما في هناك عناصر بين الحين والآخر تقوم في عمليات أرهابية أما تستهدف فيها رجال الأمن أو مثل هاي العملية الأخيرة اللي مع الأسف يعني أضرت أو تضر بالصالح العام وتضر بأرزاق الناس وهذه عمليات خطيرة الكل يدينها والكل يأخذ منها موقف وطني وإحنا إن شاء الله اليوم ننسق الأمور في مواجهة مختلف الأعمال اللي تهدد أمن البحرين the general director of civil defense asserted that previous and current sacrifices for the security and safety of the nation are much less than what Bahrain and its leadership and people deserve. He highlighted that the presence of interior minister at the fire site and his directives was a great motivation to continue in performing duties. Bahrain Petroleum Company, Bobco announced yesterday that oil supplies between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain have resumed in record time. It commended the strenuous efforts exerted by the personnel working with Bobco and Aramco. In a press statement, it expected the normal flow of supplies to be restored soon as per the requirements of the refinery. The terrorist attack was strongly denounced by a number of countries who expressed their solidarity with the kingdom against this heinous crime. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia strongly condemned the oil pipeline blast near Bori village. A foreign ministry official source denounced the acts of sabotage and terrorism being perpetrated by Iran to subvert regional security and stability. The terrorist attack was strongly denounced by a number of countries who expressed their solidarity with the kingdom against this heinous crime. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia strongly condemned the oil pipeline blast near Bori village. A foreign ministry official source 
denounced the acts of sabotage and terrorism being perpetrated by Iran to subvert regional security and stability. The United Arab Emirates expressed solidarity with the Kingdom of Bahrain in whatever measures it may take to confront these terrorist acts. It expressed confidence that these cowardly acts will not distract the government of Bahrain and its people from pursuing development and standing against desperate attempts of destruction and violence. It expressed confidence that these cowardly acts will not distract the government of Bahrain and its people from pursuing development and standing against desperate attempts of destruction and violence. Kuwait also strongly condemned the terrorist bombing in the kingdom and rejected the terrorist act which aims to undermine the security and stability of the kingdom and terrorize its civilians. It added that the bombing would only increase Bahrain's determination to confront whoever wanted to undermine its security and stability. Oman's foreign ministry affirmed full solidarity with the Kingdom of Bahrain, saying that the attack necessitates the confrontation of terrorism by all possible means to protect the Kingdom's security, development and stability. Egypt also strongly condemned the terrorist attack and reaffirmed the Egyptian government and people's stand with Bahrain in confronting all acts of terrorism and sabotage aimed to undermine its security and stability. Yemen strongly denounced the terrorist explosion perpetrated by forces that seek to undermine the region's state's stability to achieve Iran's expansionist greed. The Arab Parliament Speaker, Dr. Faham Mish'al Salmi, strongly condemned the terrorist blast, reiterating full Arab solidarity with the kingdom, as well as support to all the measures Bahrain takes to maintain its security and stability. The OIC strongly condemned the terrorist bombing and commended the measures adopted by Bahrain to protect the lives of the people and their properties. Upon, upon the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa of allocating and dividing 4,800 housing units. The Minister of Housing, Basim bin Yagub Al Hamar, announced the commencement of dividing the housing units of Alozi housing projects. The Minister stated that dividing the project units affirmed the success of the government's vision and the Ministry's initiatives of activating a partnership with the private sector. He added that the project represents one of the main projects listed among the Ministry's work program to build 25,000 housing units to continue its commitment of uh, completing 40,000 housing units within the selected time frame according to the directives of the His Majesty the King and dividing them on the beneficiaries and all governance. The minister affirmed that dividing the project represents an advanced step of enhancing the partnership mechanisms with the private sector. He expressed thanks and gratitude to the leadership and the government for their unlimited support to the housing sector and their keenness on dividing the housing units to citizens. He he congratulated the beneficiaries, reiterating the ministry's pledge to come implement the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of speeding up the implementation of the housing projects. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, to intensify site visits and follow up on the needs of the citizens, the Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed Al Saleh, visited Al Naim and Ibn Sina health centers. She noted that the leadership prioritizes the health sector and the development of health services provided to citizens through providing support and meeting the needs and aspirations of the people. The Health Minister met during the visit with a number of officials, administrators, as well as medical and nurses and caters of the health centers. The proposals of the staff and the people aimed at enhancing the medical services provided at the center were taken into consideration. The future plans and projects were also reviewed during the visit. Minister Al Saleh was briefed on the needs and demands of the citizens. She directed the medical and administrative caters concerned to study the proposals and uh, demands uh, to implement them in the future. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohamed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,264.24 points, marking a decrease of 3.34 points below last closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 63.05% of total shares. 81 transactions included 3,903,207 shares worth 960,935 Bahraini dinars. 
The overall volume of trade exchanges between Bahrain and Russia has so far soared by 292% to exceed $60 million, up from $15.3 million over the past two years. The Russian ambassador to the kingdom, Vagif Garyev, said trade exchanges are expected to continue growing to reach $70 million, boosted by Bahrain's exports of aluminum and petrochemicals. He held the steadily growing economic and trade cooperation between the two countries and the bilateral historic relations. He said that around six Russian companies have the desire to enter Bahrain's market and several economic sectors.